Please be seated, everyone. Friends, family, colleagues, and graduates, my name is Yuri Lissoyevanov, and today I have the honor to welcome you to our 2018 commencement ceremony. Both as a faculty member and as a department chair, I have, for better or worse, built a reputation for being forthright and for speaking brutal honesty to my students. Therefore, I can't think of a person better suited to uh, welcome you to this glorious and optimistic occasion. As we look around the room and get ready to walk across the stage, we should take some time to appreciate the accomplishments of our graduates, the efforts of the faculty, and the support of all of the parents and family and friends sitting here today. We can all look back at the flashpoint moments from our years up here that made us grow, those that challenged us, defined us, motivated us, and to push forward so that we can share this moment today. And we should rightfully recall those moments with the reverence that they deserve. All of you graduates sitting here today will become the individual threads that weave into a much larger fabric of artists, designers, animators, filmmakers, editors, producers, directors, cinematographers, and sound engineers. This ceremony not only marks the start of your career, but more importantly, your entry and contribution into an enormous media industry and that is unique in how it operates into a world and into a world that is far different from the world you're in now. Now the big question is, how do you navigate this large, beautiful, interconnected, somewhat scary new world? We hope that your instructors and staff have been instrumental in demonstrating you the basics. Show up, show up on time, be dependable, respect your peers, do awesome work, don't burn bridges. If these fundamentals are now embedded in your DNA, you are well positioned to begin your career in a multitude of fields, media or otherwise. But as college graduates, not only must we look at what factors help us, and keep, help us get the job and keep the job, but also those that will help sustain our career for the rest of our lives, and also to grow in the process. Normally, this is where I would provide some personal anecdotes. An experience in my career as an audio professional or as a music professional that defined me to help me become what I am. A war story, if you will. But I think an actual story would be much more, an actual war story would be much more likely. So, let's hear about General George McClellan who was a Union Major General who had graduated second in his class at West Point, which is quite an accomplishment. His strong organizational skills and an avoidance to put people into harm's way made him extremely popular amongst his soldiers. This reputation, however, was also noted by his opponents. When McClellan was given the largest American armada in history and tasked with taking over the city of Richmond, Virginia, the opposing General Magruder decided to use his prudence against him and tricked him into thinking that the Confederate Army was three times bigger than it was, even though that was logistically impossible. However, the ruse worked, and by remaining idle outside of the city of Richmond, McClellan lost his chance at any kind of decisive victory. In the spirit of optimism, however, where there's a lesson in making mistakes, there's also a lesson in second chances. Later, President Lincoln gave McClellan another opportunity putting him in charge of training several regiments to defend the city of Washington, D.C. Shortly later, Robert E. Lee invaded, and McClellan had the chance to redeem himself, make his mark on history, and become famous. McClellan again overestimated the size of the opposing army, and did his best to stay safe, even though he had reserves that were bigger than Lee's entire army, an advantage position facing the river, and the best strategic, uh, the best strategic chance to win the decisive battle. During the ensuing battle at Antietam, his abundance of caution resulted in mass casualties on both sides, a stalemate, and the successful escape of Robert E. Lee's army. At the same time, a relatively lesser known military man named Ulysses S. Grant was moving up the ranks. Unlike McClellan, Grant only graduated 21st out of 39 in his class at West Point. Grant was quiet, he was very kind, he was gentle, he was unassuming, and when he enlisted, he only wanted to do his four-year commitment so then he could go become a teacher. However, eventually, he tried to get a senior position in the Union Army, and coincidentally, it was McClellan himself that rejected him. Grant had to begin with a lower spot and work his way into a leadership position. The rest, as we say, though, is history. 
While McClellan became the most infamous major general in Civil War history, Grant became the most famous, becoming the leader of the Union Army and propelling himself to the presidency and into our history books. Now, of course, nobody in this room is on any kind of path to lead an army battalion into victory for the United States, as far as I know. But the takeaway is this. Grant's success and McClellan's lack thereof was not a result of skill or knowledge or work ethic, but it was a result of their character. By all measures, General McClellan was smarter, better educated, more skilled, more diligent, and had every advantage to let him be inscribed into our own history books. However, he was also extremely cautious and pompous. He would refuse counsel from the other generals and kept overestimating the size of the opposing armies. But most importantly, after he made a mistake, he did not take time to reflect and recover. As far as he was concerned, there were no mistakes that were made. The same weaknesses that were exploited in the Richmond campaign and in the Peninsula campaign were the same ones that were exploited again in Antietam. What Grant lacked in academic excellence and prestige he made up in assiduity. The vast majority of Grant's learning happened after he graduated college. By carefully watching, taking notes, reading voraciously, and by being forthright and curious with those around him. When Grant made mistakes, he made adjustments. When he was successful, he moved forward quietly. Grant was calm, thorough, and modest. The deciding factor in his success was not the one of talent. It was of temperament. It was not of diligence but of disposition. And the lives of Grant and McClellan today is a reminder of why we call this day a commencement. As you move on with your careers and the rest of your lives, your character will be tested on a daily basis, often without your knowledge. Whether you graduate today second in your class or 21st in your class, today is a day all of the graduates share as equals as you begin your careers and the rest of your lives. This day is a commencement in the truest sense of the term. While your formal education has now officially ended, your life, career, and personal education are just beginning. It is our deepest wish that we at Flashpoint have helped you not only develop the skills you need to succeed, but also help you develop into people of good character that are curious about the world, that learn to grow from mistakes, and make the choices to lead up to a life of fame rather than a life of infamy. We take pride in being more than just your professors, we are your leaders and mentors, and we hope you take pride in this as well. Ladies and gentlemen, today we celebrate the commencements of the rest of your lives. You have earned your seats at the largest table in the world, and you should be extremely proud of your accomplishments. Please do stay in touch with us, and let's all work together to continue living lives of integrity. Thank you and welcome. Hello. It is uh, my pleasure to have the opportunity to introduce the valedictorian for um, Flashpoint for the graduating class of 2018. Uh, the valedictorian um, and its role in a graduating class uh, has a place in history, and often it's looked at as the person who's achieved the highest in terms of academics and their grades. And that's true in the case of um, our valedictorian this year. But she is also, in the two years that I've gotten a chance to know her, taking it upon herself to be a leader, a leader on campus, a leader in the classroom, and to piggyback off of what Yuri was saying, a leader with character. Um, I consider it a privilege to have been a stop in the journey that um, our valedictorian has had to take to this point. And um, it's been a privilege to watch her grow and become the designer and human that she is today over the last two years. And I'm sure it's gonna be even better to see where she goes from here. So without any further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Melanie Pola, our Alex <laughs> I, I, I had a lot 
plan for this, but obviously my emotions have been getting the better of me. Um, and I want to talk about the thing that I learned the most uh, here. When I first started at Flashpoint, formerly known as Track Flashpoint College, thank you, <laughs> um, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I started as an animation major because I thought I wanted to do video games, um, because that's all I did, was play video games. <laughs> but now that um, my time here has kind of come to an end, I realized that the better path for me was the path that Kieran Delaney showed me, actually, as far as graphic design goes, and I know that it's for me. And when, when I talk to people about what I do, I always tell them that the only reason that I have excelled so much is because I found what I was made for and I have not stopped since I started. And that's the same case as all of my graduates sitting here with me. The only reason that we are here is because we have unrelented passion, dedication, you know, character, and everything that goes along with it to create young creative professionals. Um, I'm proud to be part of Flashpoint Chicago, and I'm proud to be in the group of gradu graduates that I am, because I love all of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, and the, yeah, you, you all have made me, without the relentless passion and attentiveness that all of our faculty have given to us, that is why we are amazing. It's always been within us, it's just that people had to bring it out of us, and I want to say that now. Um, along with all of the other supporters, whether it be family or friends or everybody else in between that. Um, yeah, everybody is born with it. I think you just have to find what you were made for and then just stick with it. Um, and yeah, I'm just so happy. <laughs> to be, to share this moment with, with you all and walk off this stage with you all because we all deserve this degree. We deserve it because we didn't sleep, sometimes we didn't eat, and that's all because of the amount of love that we have, okay? And I, I, I think that needs to be said because sometimes we don't give ourselves enough credit. Um, and I'm sure everyone feels that. <laughs> So with that, I want to thank all of my friends sitting in the audience and my little crew here of, of black clad graduates and all of the lovely faculty that have been there through the amazing discoveries and the terrible days where all you want to do is cry and like go home and have a snack and take a nap, you know, because <laughs> that does happen. Um, but. Also, take care of yourself in, in the big bad world because not everything is going to be pretty. Um, just take time for yourself, love yourself, and love the fact that you have come this far and you haven't even started to get going with your degree. Thank you. Good afternoon, and congratulations, graduates. I'm Mary Sebeck, and I have the pleasure of introducing this year's keynote speaker. Today's guest of honor is a Chicago native, born and raised on the South Side. He is an Army veteran, and after serving our country, he served our city as a Chicago police officer on the night shift. During the day, he fed his artistic appetite by taking classes at Columbia College Chicago, majoring in theater and minoring in playwriting. In 2004, this devoted husband and father moved to LA to pursue his passion. He finished his degree at Columbia College Hollywood with a bachelor's in fine arts and cinema with an emphasis in writing for film and TV. He later received his master's degree in fine arts in producing for film, television, and new media from the University of Southern California's Peter Stark Producing Program. 
He went on to hold roles as assistant writer on the NBC drama, State of Affairs. Staff writer on NBC's Diversity Writers Initiative, Shades of Blue. Television writer on Fox's critically acclaimed, Shots Fired. And story editor on the highly controversial Netflix series, Seven Seconds. Currently, he works as co-producer for the praised Showtime series, The Shy. He's an inspiring individual whose passion for learning and pioneering spirit is quite contagious. And so, without further ado, please join me in welcoming David Shakes. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I want to begin with a, with a public service announcement. Uh, this is a really, really energetic uh, group. So um, it's a hundred and ridiculous outside right now. I have the feeling that um, some debauchery will, you know, jump off and second that all of this wraps up. So I just want you guys to uh, hydrate for um, the libations flow. There it is. Good afternoon, parents, faculty, friends, and the graduating class of 2018. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to be here today. People who stand in accomplishment of some Herculean task always inspire me. Each of you has a dream, and with each accomplishment, every time you hit another milestone, that dream, that vision, becomes more clear. Proverbs 29.18 says that where there is no vision, the people perish. The fact that you are here as a graduate of Flashpoint Chicago that you've toiled and sacrificed, that you've hustled, lost sleep, in some cases amassed debt, all with the goal in mind of preparing yourself to enter an arena that holds no guarantee of success, says to me that you are a visionary. And because of that, you will not perish. Kendrick Lamar said it best, we gonna be all right. I am so immensely proud of each and every one of you today. You are special men and women, and this is why. Because you walk in purpose, on purpose. I'm going to say that one more time. You walk in purpose, on purpose. You have intentionally chosen to carve a path for your life that in many cases is completely contrary to the circumstances that rear you. I'm a Southside kid, born and raised. I grew up on house music, right? And by the grace of God, Dodge gangbanger, okay, in a home where a parent used and sold drugs. Many of my friends from the old neighborhood are in the penitentiary or the cemetery. Others that escaped prison were being shot to death and now fixtures on the block trapped by their addiction. So, what made me so lucky? Well, I had a mother who demanded I be in the house, not on the way to the house, not in front of the house, not on the porch of the house, but in the house before the street lights came on. And I was blessed with teachers in the Chicago public school system who saw something in me that made them encourage me, 
push me, pull me away from bad situations. I'm sure that many of you here today at Flashpoint know exactly what it means to have a teacher or family member care enough and want you to succeed enough to not allow you to fall by the wayside, even when you didn't see the potential in yourself. To have someone believe in you is a beautiful thing. That's why you're here today. In fact, I would be remiss if we did not acknowledge the parents, teachers, spouses, significant others, friends, and loved ones who prayed, pulled, and pushed you to this day. Graduates, please join me in giving a rousing round of applause. writer by profession and have learned to embrace this particular form of storytelling. The irony of this is that I moved to Los Angeles with my family to act. I left what many would regard as a well-paying job, city job, to move to Hollywood. I had a wife, two sons, and a six-month-old daughter, but I was determined to make it work. Acting is a form of storytelling. And I convinced myself that it was acting or nothing. Needless to say, I spent many years with nothing because I refused to be open to other opportunities that presented themselves in my travels. For 10 years, we struggled. There were some victories along the way, but for the most part, it was hand and mouth. It really hit me how bad we were struggling when my daughter, Spencer, one day asked me to buy her a Happy Meal. And I had to tell her I couldn't do it because we just didn't have the money. My wife sat me down and she told me, you have to stop feeling sorry for yourself and make it happen, period. No excuses. You're allowing this pursuit to keep you square in your aspirations. It's not about your feelings. It's about what are you willing to do to sacrifice to get to where you want to be. If they won't cast you, cast yourself. Stop begging people to put you in their film projects and create your own. Now you can call that a catharsis or the light bulb went off in my head. It was all of those things, but there was a fundamental change in me in that moment. That's where the shift happened. And I realized I had to change my attitude about the entire pursuit. I was going about this thing all wrong. Here's where I want to try to save you 10 years on your journey. Now, I preface this all by saying, turn off the clock that you set for when the goal needs to happen. Be about the process. Don't worry about when it's going to happen. Be about the process and focus on the task at hand. Everything else will happen in due time. I promise you. I took it back to basics and I asked myself, what is it that you want and what's in the way of you doing that? It sounds really simple, but at the heart of those two questions is this. You have to make a choice. Will I continue to wallow in self-pity, play the victim, and blame a system that's designed specifically to keep me, David Shanks, out of the industry, right? Or do I build it myself and have the confidence to believe that they will come? I bet on myself. 
At this point in my life, I hadn't finished my undergraduate work, so I enrolled in Columbia College, Hollywood. I was a man on a mission. I wanted to learn how to make my own films in order to act in them. Purely selfish motives, people. During the process, I discovered a latent passion for writing and directing. And because I wanted to make the projects I wrote, I wanted to go on to direct them. I inadvertently learned the art of producing. It was a rebirth creatively where I have not since felt such great satisfaction. It gave me a sense of empowerment. And after that, I walked into these auditions with a little more swagger. Right? Perhaps that tiny bit of desperation and self-doubt wasn't there anymore because at the end of the day, I knew that I was working on my own stuff. So this new mode of thinking began to permeate other facets of my life. Suddenly, the day job wasn't as unbearable. I started to meet other people who were just as passionate about getting things done as I was, and I finally felt like I was on my way. Even today, as a working writer and producer in the industry, I figured out a way to incorporate my love and passion for acting into my writing. The second job I landed in the business was a limited series on, shot, on, on Fox called Shots Fired. I wrote the seventh hour, but had made significant contributions to the writing of the first six hours of the series. When it was time for me to write my hour, I penned a character that I wanted to play. Right? I asked my showrunner if I could have the role. And he said to me, absolutely not. <laughs> but he gave me a small role, right? And I took it. Happily. But here's the thing. I took it because I don't believe that there are small roles. They're just small actors. You take what you get and you kill them. Now I'm producing this, my first hour of television, and the actor we cast in the role that I had originally written for myself showed up on set with his lip this big, right? He had gone to the dentist and was given a shot, and it hit a nerve causing a tremendous amount of swelling. The director turned to me and he said, David, if we don't get this done now, it's gonna cost us a lot of money to reset all this. We can't use this guy. You should go to hair and makeup, and you do it, right? He had already directed me in the smaller role, the previous scene, and he trusted, had faith in the fact that I could do the work. We had a brief conversation with the showrunner, and the showrunner agreed, and I was allowed to do the role. I share that story to encourage you to make yourself a multi-hyphenate artist. If film is your thing, it might not be a bad idea to learn as much as you can about finance and marketing. If you're a graphic artist, learn about animation. Find as many different disciplines as you can to make your own personal bundle of skill sets that you bring to the table. This makes you more valuable to the team you join. And it also generates multiple streams of revenue on the strength of one project. I was paid to write the episode, and I was paid to act in the episode. Let that sit for a second. Do the work one time, put on a couple of different hats, and let the checks come off of one time that you showed up at work. I want you guys to believe in something greater than yourself. It's been my experience that being left to my own devices has not yielded me the best results. So I choose now to place my faith in a higher power that sustains me and strengthens me. 
Most assuredly, you will continue to face adversity along the way of your journey. The challenge is to persevere in spite of the obstacles, the haters, and the naysayers. How do you continue when there's nothing left to inspire you, to motivate you, to drive you forward? You have to believe. You have to have faith. Now for the purposes of this discussion, let's define faith as this. Faith is the belief in that which is unseen. I want to ask everybody a question right now. Can you see the air that you breathe? Absolutely not. But you know it's there, right? That comparison is akin to the type of faith you need to have in the moments of darkness and despair, the seasons of unemployment, because that will come. The thousand no's you must endure in order to finally hear the one yes that may be the potential game changer that sets you on your path towards your definition of success. Be the first one at work and the last one to leave. Do the things that set you apart from mediocrity and set as a personal standard for yourself excellence. Say please and thank you. Say that again. Say please and thank you. It sounds really simple, but it will take you such a long way. Walk into the room knowing that your presence will change the atmosphere. The energy in the space you occupy changes and it affects everyone in the environment. That's the person you want to be. And I promise you, that's the person that your employer wants on the team. Be that person until you are the boss. And when you become the boss, you lead with that as your example. I want you all to challenge yourself to be so curious about the depth of your own potential that you adopt as a personal mantra a question. What would happen if I never gave up? Develop for yourself a personal affirmation because words have power. I believe that what I speak from my mouth into the universe will manifest. So you have to choose your words very carefully, particularly as it relates to what you say about yourself. I want to share with you my own personal affirmation. I got this thing on a, on a constant loop in my head, right? It reminds me of what the goal is and more importantly, why of it all. Your affirmation should be laser specific. By God's grace and mercy, I am writing, producing, directing, and acting in award-winning, critically acclaimed film and television projects that yield me an annual high six-figure salary so that I might continue to do your work and consistently provide for my family. I am for the film and television industry what Jay-Z and Sean Combs are for the music industry. Lord God, this is your will for my life. If this is pleasing to your sight, let the resources and the provisions come. I say this to myself a few times a day, particularly during those moments when I feel myself getting off track. In life, sometimes you have to be your own best support system. There'll be days when you'll have to look in that mirror and tell yourself, remind yourself, I got this. Affirm yourself. Speak life into that project that just won't seem to come together. Be your biggest cheerleader because no one 
is going to care about your dreams and goals more than you. The change in my attitude and work habits has created an opportunity where I am literally living my dream. In a few short weeks, I will return to Chicago to produce an hour of television I've written about life on the south side of our city. Look at God. Maybe. Each of our journeys is specific, but the fight and struggle to get there is where you'll find commonality. I want to encourage each of you to find strength in this community, this family at Flashpoint. Keep in contact with each other. Keep in contact with these people that have blessed you with their knowledge. It would be foolish of you not to lean on each other and become your own network. Each of you has a very specific talent that could contribute to the other's project. Have those conversations with each other. It's so hard to build something on your own. But when you have relationships that are mutually beneficial, the sky is literally the limit. You're a visionary. There's a dream that's in you desperately fighting to come into being. This came to me last night and I, and I had to jot it down. Webster defines flashpoint as a point at which someone or something bursts suddenly into action or being. Graduates, today you are prepared to make your dreams come true and burst into action. Go make it happen. Thank you very much for your time. Each year, our faculty and students have an opportunity to nominate an instructor for our Distinguished Faculty Award. We nominate one full-time, one adjunct, and one critical studies instructor. This year, our distinguished faculty are, from the Recording Arts Department, Paul Rogers. From the Digital Art and Visual Communication Department, Dan DeLuca, who unfortunately couldn't be with us today. And from the Critical Studies Department, Anna Smith. Okay. 
So um, when I was asked to give the farewell address, I thought that um, this is this is going to be impossible because um, saying goodbye to my students is really not one of my strong suits. But I began to think about the last two and some of you four years that we've had together. And um, what kept coming to mind were some very, very strong four-letter words. So I would like to share those four-letter words with you. Work. You've done a lot of work to get here. And we are incredibly proud of you. But you're not at the end of the journey. Your work isn't done. As you enter the job force, you're going to continue to not only work, but to learn. For in learning, you grow. Grow. The growth we have seen in you is tremendous. You have all changed and grown so much. Think about where you were when you first came here and where you are now. But your growth is not over. It will continue with each new job and each new experience. Be open to it. Don't run from it. And I know that growth can be difficult. I know that change is hard. Hard. You have accomplished something that is hard. This program is difficult. We designed it that way. We wanted to challenge you and push you outside of your comfort zones. We demanded a lot from you. <laughs> but as you enter the workforce, you are going to be challenged again. And you are going to encounter in situations that are hard. But you will rise to the challenge because you have all demonstrated that you have grit. Grit. You showed up every day and you kept coming to classes. You faced struggles in the classroom and also outside of the struggles, and out, sorry, struggles outside of the classroom. But you persevered and you succeeded. That trade is going to serve you well as you move forward in your careers. There will be times when you think that you can't do it but you will. And in those times, I want you to think about your moments here and how the passion to do your work helps see you through. That fire is one of your keys to success. Fire. You came to Flashpoint because you wanted to learn specific skills and work in specific industries. That fire and passion to pursue your dreams and create a career for yourself, that's your fire. It helped you go the extra mile. It helped you do the extra thing. And it will help be one of the reasons that you continue your journey. Just as it helped you reach graduation today, it will continue to help you reach the goal of starting your career in your chosen field. Goal. You did it. You started your education and you had a goal. And that goal was to learn and to graduate. Done. And so your next goal, parents, you will like this, your next goal is to put the skills that you learned to work. Amen. Once yes. you have accomplished that, you will set another goal and another goal and another goal. Keep setting goals. Keep striving to do new work, to do better work, and to learn more. And within these goals that you set for yourself, I challenge you to set and keep this goal. Love what you do. Love, that is the most powerful of our four letter words. You all love what you do. It is what goes along with your fire. It is what helps you maintain your grit and reach your goal. And that's fantastic. But when I think about your time here at Flashpoint, love comes to mind in many different ways. I saw all of you receive love, whether that was someone from your support system a classmate, or even your faculty and staff. I saw all of you give love, be it a word of encouragement, an inside joke with team members, or just a thank you to someone in your support system or a faculty or staff member. As you move forward outside of Flashpoint's walls, I encourage you to actively look for places and times when you can continue to share that love. Find time to mentor someone starting their journey. Instill the love that you have for your industry in someone else. Be the colleague that offers the kind word and say thank you often. Stay in touch with the friends that you have made here. And for us, your faculty who, believe it or not, love teaching and mentoring you, let us know what you're doing. 
because we're excited to know where you go, what you do, and all the wonderful things that you will accomplish. You make us proud. Good afternoon. We would like to now announce the uh, Film Department Awards and the three recipients, if you would please stand and call your name. Outstanding Scholar, sponsored by Cinema Chicago and the Chicago International Film Festival, Guadalupe Valdivia. Outstanding Technician, sponsored by Abel Cine, Patrick Dunn. And finally, Outstanding Independent Vision, sponsored by IFP Chicago, Arturo Gamino. Class of 2018 Bachelor's Degree in Film. We'll begin with the Bachelor's of Arts in Film. Oscar Montes de Oca. William Welch King. Robert Shepard. Michael Schaffner. Adam Stephen Herrera. Sean Quampitak. Desmond Huey. Bachelors in Sciences for Digital, um, sorry, Digital Media, Digital Arts. Andrew Wyrick. <laughs> Emmett Trumbull. Sciences for Animation and Visual Effects. 
Max Volney Dawson. Alex Barrett. Sterling Muhammad. Now I'd like to present our Associates of Arts and Sciences for Visual Communication. Jordan Jefferson. It is my honor to present the 2018 graduating class in recording arts associates. Oh, my apologies. I would like to announce the awards for the recording arts department. Uh, and they're already standing, so they don't have to stand up. For uh, outstanding sound design, sponsored by McDSP. Luke Bontras. For outstanding work in music and live sound, Evan Ulrich. I was sponsored by Sure Microphones and also sponsored by Sure Microphones, our professionalism award to Kenneth McKeeslin. Darcel D. Sally Craig. D. John Lowe. <laughs> Kenneth J. McKeeslin. Matthew Ibarra. <laughs> Andre Calderon. <laughs> Ruben Ochoa. Seattle, Atlas. Anthony Galindo. Skylar Cote. DJ Williams. <laughs> Jeremiah Douglas. <laughs> Griffin Googie. Fernando Barrera. <laughs> Dennis Paguada. <laughs> I 
Alejandro Romero. Luke Montrose. Andre Bue. Kevin Cahill. MJ Angeles. <laughs> Jory Chow. Congratulations, everyone. Jacob Real. <laughs> Nicholas Skirto. <laughs> Chris Zelensky. <laughs> Sergio Hernandez. Producer, director, writer, director, editor, Andrew
Jessica Durlis. <laughs> Brittany Pollock. Graduates, would you please stand? Yeah. 